right, we are at War Stories here, and we are going to be talking to Crisida Adames, and Crisida is probably one of the top female prospects in the Philadelphia area. Right now, she is 2-0 and as a pro. She signed a contract with Combate America, and not only is she a great fighter, she's a tremendous person and a great cook. She makes me hungry with everything she posts on, on her social media. Crisida, how you feeling? I know that you've been trying to stay in shape as best as you can, and that's never been a problem for you. But welcome to War Stories. Say hello and tell us how you're feeling. Hello, guys. Um, yeah, trying to be active, not, trying not, not to get fat, <laughs> like everyone else. One of the things that, you know, I've gotten to see you as an amateur and now as a pro, and your two pro fights, you traveled, so it was a little bit different because everything else had been at home. You fought two people that were bigger than you. The second fighter didn't even make weight. Your standoff was just so dominant. You looked better than you ever have. We haven't even gotten to see you on the ground at all, and that's because you, you've dictated where the fights have been. And I know you have a strong jujitsu game because you've been rolling with Will Martinez for a long time. But I still believe the strongest part of your game is your mental toughness. And how, why do you think that is? Why do you think that you're so strong, like mentally? Like to me, you seem like nothing is going to nothing is going to shake you, no matter what happens. Tell me a little bit about you know how you got to this point in your career, and why do you think that you know that your attitude and your mental game is so strong? Well, yes. Um I think for you to be a fighter, um, you have to be mentally strong no matter what. That's the first thing that you need to have when you uh, enter the cage. So that's a mindset that I always um, have because um, I've been through a lot my whole life, even with my childhood. A lot of people doesn't know but because I don't like to put myself out there or anything like that. Nobody needs to know my business. but. If it comes to one day to tell my story, I have to, I do it, but um, yeah, um, I think since I'm little, since I was a kid, I'm really mentally strong, and um, yeah, uh, I think it, all my fights, I try not to stand up more, because that's how the fights start, and like, um, if it goes to the ground, I'm ready for it, but like, uh, stand, up, uh, stand up wise, um, I'm trying to take it there because I'm trying to learn more and more and trying to dominate my fights and stand up and if it comes to the ground, um, I'm ready for it. What's it like to uh, to start out on a, a real big platform like a Combates America? Is a lot more pressure? Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, especially when you go to a fight somewhere else, uh, like where they leave or uh, they have the, the big crowd and you don't have nobody there for you. Um, but yeah, it's difficult but uh, like I say, I'm uh, mentally strong and ready for anything. Well, Chris Ida, I know that the, the women over there, there's a really tight-knit group of women over there at Martinez, and yes. it's almost like you're, they're all like your sisters. But when you're rolling and you're getting ready for a fight, are you also rolling with with the guys over there, the Turnbulls, the Dwayne Shields? Are, are those guys also helping you get ready when you have a fight? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, when I'm training for a fight, I usually um, I'm usually with them more uh, more than the girls. Chris, when's the last time you've almost or have been in a street fight outside of the cage? Yesterday. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I almost uh, let me see. I almost got into a fight, but uh, I didn't. I just walk away. <laughs> Are you good at that? I mean, no matter what people say, everyone has that one I, word. At this, just, right. nah, at this point, I don't like to buy for free anymore. That's it. I'm not doing it for free. I'm not doing it on the street or the bar or anything like that. I need to get paid for it. <laughs> Somebody got to bet. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in all types of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you look like that kind of guy. <laughs> what's your um, what's your ultimate goal? Like, how many pro fights do you think you're going to need before you think you're ready to be in the UFC? Like, you'll feel comfortable in there. Um, I, I mean, my last fight, I feel like I was comfortable in there. 
well not the first round the first round is always the the hardest but like um probably i don't know uh let's say 10 fights <laughs> yeah I, I, mean, I, I think like I, I mean sorry sorry i think like it doesn't happen like sometimes you get you get a before the 10 fights or the five fights it, it depends how how i mean it depends what they want to do with you or anything else well, if you pay attention about uh I say this all the time about one of your teammates, about Kyle Dawkins. I think Kyle Dawkins is by far one of the smartest fighters that I've ever been around, seen, or watched fight because Kyle fought at three different weight classes in the amateurs before he finally found his home at 85. And it goes to yes. show, and it goes to show with doing that how it played out in his um, in his pro career, and that's why he's nine and zero, and literally the top prospect in the Philadelphia area to be in the UFC. I think Kyle exactly. is by far the smartest one. He fought heavyweight, late heavyweight, and five. I think that's very smart that he hung down in the amateurs. He got seasoned down there before he went pro. I say that I say that all the time when I describe Kyle. And that's the part that I, I don't understand because when he went to the contender series, I was like, what well, just happened? When he didn't get he didn't get the contract. Like the other people that the fight was like they were good. The people that got uh, the contract, but like not uh, not as good as Kyle. He dominated the entire fight. But I guess uh, social media play a uh, really high role when it comes to get a contract in the UFC or like favorites. Like you know what I mean? But it, it is what it is. He's gonna get. He's gonna make it big in, anywhere else. It's, it, it becomes a popularity contest. I mean, exactly. it's, not, it's no shot at him because I'm actually not a fan of his. But like. It's, it's the same thing with Conor McGregor. Once McGregor showcased his popularity, when he beat Seaver in Boston and hopped over the cage and ran and screamed in Aldo's face, that was such a marketing genius. Like, mm -hmm. I don't like Conor McGregor, but I think he's one of the smartest businessmen in fighting sports. Yes. And he's mm -hmm. a cult following to where even if he loses his next 10 fights, he's still going to sell because he's a draw, he's a meme maker, he's a, a catchphrase guy. Yeah, his skills are like really... How many people you see saying, who the fuck is this guy? And it's so corny, but people do it because of McGregor. You know, and, exactly. and that's what it comes down to. It's not, we're not in the era anymore in the UFC where it's skill set, it's popularity. So it's what it comes down to, it's, it's popular fights. It's not, all right, well, this guy's, this guy's the better fighter. He's ranked 11th. Why can't he play for the title? When they're letting number 12 guy who's got fucking a million social media followers fight the, the guy for the title. And that's what this shit's coming down to. That's why I think Kyle didn't get taken in. I mean, you finish a fight at a 30-25 decision and you don't take that guy. I mean, the only other thing that could have happened to Kyle that day, he would have got arrested for a homicide. You don't think that could happen? <laughs> that's what that's literally, about. literally. I 100% agree with you, like, um, I just didn't understand, like, after that fight, I was like, um, I don't understand anymore, or uh, what's going on, or, like, you have to be pretty, or you have to have, like, a nice ass to get in the UFC, you gotta have a pretty face to get in the UFC, um, you gotta have, like, nice titties, oh, like, I don't get it, like, if you have good skills and you fight well, you don't get a contract, but, like, if you, uh, if you, uh, social media is really, uh, on high on followers and like you have a pretty face then you make it but if you uh, uh, like i don't get it i literally don't understand what's going on kyle belonged think, in the ufc three fights ago he belonged in the ufc three fights ago 185 that division the division needs a kyle Dawkins in there 100 percent does uh three fights ago he should have been in there you know and, and and that's that's just what it comes down to but the female the female division i think you're going to make a strong run at the ufc title once you get in you got skill set built with a great team. I mean, Will, Will and Chavo will get you right. You know that your other teammates as well. You got a good team behind you, and you have the mindset for it. Like you said, as long as you're mentally strong, you're going to beat anything you put your mind to. Also, to get into the UFC, the, there's, because there isn't as many women. If you look at the records of the, of the women fighting in the UFC, you don't need to have eight or ten fights to get in there. A lot of them have five or six fights, and they're getting contracts in the UFC. And I've listen. I've gotten to see a lot of younger pro fighters and Crusada. Listen, I, I I usually like to keep fighters humble, and I don't like to tell them how great they are. But I know Crusada is a humble person, 
she's going to be in the UFC and she's not just going to be in the UFC. Chris Ida is going to be there to make noise and she's going to be a championship contender. I know her work ethic. I know how, how mentally tough she is. And on top of that, she's very skilled. And I think she's going to represent Philadelphia and her community very well. And it's just a matter of time. And once we get past this and she gets in the cage a couple more times, her name is going to be a household name. And I'm not afraid to say that because I know she won't get a big head because the people that she work with won't let her. And that's not her personality. And I'm just no. happy for her. <laughs> But she is going to represent our community and the sport tremendously. And she knows how both my wife Marlene and I love her to death as a person, not just in the cage. And this is what the sport is about. It's about good people, good fighters, and she's everything that's good about the sport. I'm so thrilled to know her. I'm glad that she joined us today because big things are coming to this lady. Thank you for saying that. Um and yeah, like, um, I like all my female fighter. If I train with you and I try to help as much as I can with you, like, I'm not, I'm not a girl that, I'm competitive, but, but not at the, point, at the point that I need to, like, uh, not help you out. Um, I want to be there for you, and I want you to be there for me. Like, Devin and me, we always, like, uh, training together. Uh, she comes to help me out all the time, and, like, I really appreciate her, uh, appreciate her for that. She's always there with me. Um, yeah, Devin is like the one that always like um, trying to help me with my uh, camps and everything. See, I am the same way. The same way. I never wanted to be the show. I just want to be a part of it. That's all. That's why I'm always yes. dedicated to my teammates. I don't. I really care less about fighting. I just like to fight in the gym and be part of the show and be part of people's camps. I don't like being the center of attention, believe it or not. I just like to be there. Sure. <laughs> when, it comes what? To, when it comes to talking shit, yeah, and I'll definitely send her attention. When it comes to the fighting stuff, I'll leave that to the guys that live that shit. <laughs> I hear my neighbor coming out right now. She's about to mow her lawn. You know what's funny? She's a bitch. When I got my new basketball court, she called L and I, and I had to like put out another fifteen hundred to get some grass put down or whatever. Oh my god cost me some money so now we just fuck with her like non-stop <laughs> like, <laughs> you, say, you want to make 1500 real quick come fight my neighbor <laughs> I'll tell her your money the other day I'll take, I'll take it I'll take it I'll take it Mike point the camera at her house so I don't watch it Jeff, she uh, she mows her lawn. When she walks past my yard, I have my son put trash bags out in his underwear. It's the funniest oh shit. Like, well, I'll tell you what you said. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, Chris, as a female fighter, uh, no more worries than a male fighter in terms of, like, you know, getting a tooth knocked out, a big black eye, a fat lip. I mean, does that, does, does that bother female fighters more than it does male? Or do you just do your thing? Uh, me? Personally, I'm already ugly. I don't care. <laughs> Not that. I'm already ugly. My face is ugly. I don't care. <laughs> if I get beat up, I just want to. I just want to win. I just want to get the money. <laughs> so, are you more comfortable? <laughs> let's say the UFC doesn't happen. Would you be more comfortable uh, making money in like a Bellator or um, a One FC or something like that? I mean, ultimately, is the goal to make money, or do you want to? really test yourself and say I did the UFC run? What makes you happy? I really don't care much about UFC. But like if I get signed, it's great. But my goal is just to fight and get paid well and make new experience. I don't really care about UFC and or make it there. I just want to make it somewhere and fight good fighters and test myself. That's all. For the right price, would you fight for the UFC title uh, next week? Sure notice if they came here? Of course, if the money's right. I Chris, I, what, what, what weight class? What weight? Like when you do get to the UFC, what weight class are you? Uh, what's your goal? What's your weight class? Because I know that you can. You fought people that are heavier. You know, in the end, what weight class do you see yourself competing for a championship at? Oh no, I'm really tiny. Um, I fought those girls because I mean, I, I float. I float to that country. Like I was like, ah, oh, I'm not gonna fight. I mean, I, I gotta fight. You know what I mean? I'm here, but I'm really tiny. Um, if they made the 105 uh, UFC, definitely, uh, definitely fight for uh, for UFC for the 105 weight class. But one, I'm gonna stay at 115. That's 
that's where my gonna stay at. Okay. Any uh, any shout outs? Anybody you want to talk about? Thank anything like that? Yeah, the the your neighbor. She's the one when she's doing the lawn. That's <laughs> that's <a> pretty good. <laughs> she's independent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know my team, Martinez. They always there with me. Um, well, like he's the best coach around uh, Philadelphia. He's always there uh, for me uh, as a friend, coach, and um, yeah, uh, my teammates, my family always supporting me, my friends. Yeah, and my sponsors always my sponsors because they help me a lot <laughs> to get paid for all my stuff. <laughs> Right, I cool. just want to fight for out of work once again. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we definitely want to bring you back. Uh, the fight with Letitia was awesome. You girls went at it. That was fantastic. And from there, you just skyrocketed. We got you on fight number three. Now you're six deep, 2-0 pro. So the sky's the limit for you. So, uh, you know, we wish you the best. Yeah, just, we just waiting for you. <laughs> waiting for you to call me with a fight. Are you uh, are you technically under contract with Combates, or is it a one-fight deal? No, well, yeah, I'm under contract with him. Yeah, but after that, I'm all, I want to fight for out of war again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like to fight for you. Fight. 